Hi everyone, I've got the incredible Kira Whitman with us today and I'm so excited. I have been stalking her online for months. She's got such incredible content and such a good heart and her information is absolute gold, okay? Um, she's like me, she's a real bookworm and she studied a lot. Okay, she's a wellness called practitioner. She's done traditional medicine, um, New Eden School of Natural Health, and you're a functional nutritionist as well, aren't you? Correct, yeah. Okay, and there's loads more. I'm going to put the link to her website, and she actually just launched a new program last week about minerals, which looks like it's going to be incredible. Um, ironically, right at the same time as I'm reading the mineral fix, and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is so cool. Um, so I'm going to let her introduce herself a little bit, and then we're going to launch into everything that we need to get healthy and um, really find that balance that we're looking for and that strength in our body. So I'm going to hand over to you, Kira. Just say hi to everybody, and then off we go. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, everyone. Um, you said I'm Kira Whittem. I'm a functional nutritionist, and yeah, a little bit of a nerd. Uh, love studying, love learning new things, and it's all been fueled by my own health journey and my husband's health journey. I love that it's both of you, because I find that it's actually easier sometimes to find information about women and then men online. Do you find that as well? I do, to an extent, yeah. yeah. Particularly about male hormones. There's a lot about male bodybuilding, but when it comes to like actual balance, it's a different beast. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, so one of the topics that pulled me to you was thyroid, right? Mm -hmm. And you may not know this, but I was actually diagnosed with an underactive thyroid when I was 10 years old. Oh, wow. So when you were talking about thyroid and reversing it, especially the way that you do it, I thought it's such an important topic because people are suffering with it younger and younger, and younger now. So tell me a little bit about how you treat that, what the issues are, why the actual testing isn't adequate. Yeah, go into your thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Thyroid. Oh man. I mean, there are so many, even if we just talk women, I think it's 33 million women wow. with it. I, it I, the statistic is alarming. I don't have it off the top of my head. Um, but the problem is a lot of doctors are just testing TSH. Sometimes they'll throw in T4. And I like to tell people that's like putting together a puzzle without three quarters of the pieces. Like, how are you going to see the whole picture? You can't, it doesn't make any sense. So You've got to have a full thyroid panel, the TSH, free T3, free T4 antibodies to see the entire picture and evaluate what's going on. From there, thyroid, this is the thing, systems in our body don't just fail. We're, we're meant to be healthy. So if something goes wrong, it's figuring out what's going on underneath the engine, like what's going on underneath the hood, I should say. Yeah. And with thyroid, a lot of times it's mineral imbalances. Uh, zinc is a big one, iron, iodine, selenium, those are four crucial minerals for thyroid. So a lot of times we'll look at, okay, what's someone's mineral status? Most of the time, women especially struggle with converting T4 to T3, which is the more active thyroid hormone, mm -hmm. um, even children. <laughs> and if we look at mineral levels, a lot of times I'll find that iodine and selenium are low, sometimes the others as well. That's the first thing. Then from a more spiritual woo-woo standpoint, we also have to look at why would the body be doing this? Is there something going on that you have been holding back that you haven't voiced? Um, we've got to look at it from that perspective too, I think. Oh, you're talking to someone who trains medical intuitives for a living. That's <laughs> what I do. <laughs> so I hear you, the spiritual woo-woo and not woo-woo for yeah. me. <laughs> Um, yeah, the selenium, the zinc, the iodine. And I think like so many, we're exposed to so many toxins. Oh, yeah. I was actually a professional swimmer in my teens. So I was constantly in the chlorine and it strips your body of iodine, strips your body of zinc. And I, you know, you have no idea what's going on. Right. Um, but there's so much in the environment, especially because kids do more extracurricular activities and they get offered more mineral stripping foods. Mm -hmm. you know so um it's it's quite interesting plus you in the u.s you guys have a an ingredient list that's insane compared to ours in the u right it's disturbing <laughs> on so many levels yeah because just the iodine piece if we look at it, you said it um chlorine will strip the body of iodine so i always tell people summer months if you're swimming in a pool you have to replenish iodine 
But same thing with bromine, which is found in wheat. And if you look at standard American diet, and I'm sure other cultures, there's a lot of wheat happening, lots of bread, lots of pasta, got to replenish the iodine then. And then yeah. fluoride, which is in the water here and toothpaste and everything. So there's so many negative opportunities to just deplete iodine. Yeah. And they've, they've um, pulled that out of the salt as well. They used to add it in Europe. And as of two years ago, they stripped it. And then the thyroid levels also increased of underactive again. Wow. I didn't know that. Huh. Well, they started adding iodine and uh, D3 and vitamin C to food after the second world war, because they were having such across the board um, mm-hmm. increase in disease. And I think it was last year, the year before, it was the year before, gosh, my son's going to be two in January. And my brain is like, how is this possible? Um, but no, it was two years ago because it was when by the start of COVID, they very quietly started to remove the iodine, the vitamin D from they, they were adding to foods and then the numbers started to increase again. Um, but especially because I live in a very cold place, the UK is very cold and very dark and the food doesn't get as much light as it needs. You know, most of it's imported in. So if, if you're not supplementing with bioavailable options, it's really messy very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, even in the US, there's so many people that don't go outside and get sunlight and and the food, same thing. It's yeah, (laughs) that's a whole other conversation. So tell me about the testing. You said that you do hair testing, other kinds of testing. Tell me what kind of testing that you do, because you're one of the only um, nutritionists that I see talking about it and explaining it in a very... um, not just accessible way, but it, like I said, it really makes sense. Like I love what you said about not looking for T4 as a, a huge missing piece of the puzzle. And I think not testing altogether is a huge piece of the puzzle. And I, for me, from the woo-woo perspective, we have a lot of people that don't test altogether because they see it as useless. But I really believe in monitoring results and checking in. So tell me how it works. And from your perspective, what would, advice would you give? Yeah, yeah. So for testing, it's very dependent on the person. I mean, regardless of how someone works with me, I do mineral testing just because minerals are the spark plugs of our body. They're making everything go. So if minerals are out of balance, thyroid, hormones, gut, everything takes a hit. So I do hair tissue mineral analysis, which is interesting in the fact that it is hair. (laughs) It's hair that's sent to a lab. Um, But unlike blood, it's giving us three to four months of data of solid looking at your mineral levels. We can look at heavy metals. There's a lot we can determine from that, especially if levels are high or low. Like I said, we can start to evaluate how is your thyroid (laughs) functioning or how are your hormones? Um, From there, sometimes I will suggest somebody get a full thyroid panel, especially if in a hair test, there are some markers, calcium, uh, potassium, big one. And then of course the individual minerals. But if, if those are out of balance and someone's demonstrating like typical hypothyroid symptoms, then yes, get a full thyroid panel for hormones. Sometimes I'll suggest hormone testing, but I'm light on testing compared to other practitioners, not in the sense that I don't believe in it, but I'm looking at pieces and looking at clues. So if someone comes to me with a crazy hormone imbalance, I know that hormones are just chemical messengers responding to the environment. I don't need to run a hormone panel to tell me they're jacked up. I already know they're jacked up. (laughs) Let's fix the other systems in the body and (laughs) and test the hormones at that point. So always start with the hair test. And then from there, it really depends on the person. It's just like, it's no different from the woo-woo perspective because uh, they, especially when I have students or clients they they really love having, like you said, um, a one size fits all, and it's just not realistic. Everyone's story is different, right? So if their health blueprint is different and their traumas are different and their depletions are different, even if the, if the effects or the dis-ease is the same, how they came to create it is their own, right? It's their soul's journey. So I completely resonate on such a deep level with what you just said. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's the thing. People don't understand I can have five clients come to me with Hashimoto, so autoimmune thyroiditis, and they expect the same protocol. I say, but you're you're five different people. One person over here could have had childhood trauma that's still impacting you. One person over here could have severe mineral imbalance. One person over here could have gut dysfunction. Like it depends on the person. Oh, and birth trauma, you know, it, it, especially when you add in birth control and all sorts, you know, it's 
uh, I guess like most people have no idea it takes four years for the pituitary gland to learn to talk to the ovaries. And then they've got unexplained infertility and you're sitting there going, your nervous system needs a chance to, to regulate here, you know, give it a break. Mm. Um, you know, it really interferes. And especially with like gut wall thinning, little estrogen really causes an effect on how thin or how thick the gut wall is. Mm. And they're not even thinking it's being affected by the external hormones that they're taking, never mind what they're getting in, the food that they're consuming, if it has added hormones, which a lot of the cleaning protocol, cleaning products, the the meat, the, the they do, and they're not even aware of it on a conscious level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Sorry, <laughs> I could talk to you all day. This is a lot of no, fun. No, no, but that, I mean, those are, yeah, it's so important that people recognize that and I don't think that they realize estrogen can come outside of just like taking estrogen I'm like yes it's in birth control but xenoestrogens the the estrogen mimicking chemicals like you mentioned are abundant in our society and some of the products that online claim to regulate hormones you know there are they are plant hormonal mimicking properties that then can they'll have a have a biochemical reaction with the drugs other people are taking because no one's looked at how it, it becomes a cocktail they're not even aware that we're creating yeah yeah you know and it's simple questions but it's it, it's hard to ask because when you say what supplements what what drugs and like how is it connected it's like it's deeply connected what even what whether you choose a medical protocol versus a herbal protocol you have to look at the interactions right um but i think it's it's very triggering I think overwhelming for people just how much of an onslaught there is on their health because it feels like we're sometimes giving them negative feedback when the reality is you have to give people the right to make their own decisions Mm -hmm. and they can't do that unless they understand what's going on yeah well and you said something people do feel overwhelmed. I used to feel overwhelmed, but one of my instructors once gave me the most solid piece of advice ever. And I've used this pretty much with every client ever since then. She said, the body needs three things, minimize stuff that it doesn't need, maximize what it does need and prioritize the order. That's it. If literally we can put things in a box and say, what do I need to minimize? Oh, okay. I've got all these toxic cleaning products and beauty products. Let me minimize those. I'm not saying eliminate, minimize. What do I need to maximize? Let me look at my mineral levels. Let me look at nutrient dense food and then prioritize. Oh, I'm not, I'm not sleeping well. Maybe that needs to be a priority or I'm not paying any attention to my nervous system. I have no self-care routine. It can be that simple if we put it in that and just pick one thing from each category and move forward. Oh, I love that. I absolutely love this. This, And I actually use something similar with my son. So I have like a word of the day. Yeah. And I'm like, one day it's like um, productivity. And then the other day it's presence. And then the other day it's priorities. So then I check in if I'm getting overwhelmed, like what's the word of the day? And if it's presence, then I'll give him more time. If it's productivity, I'll get more stuff done. But it really helps, doesn't it? To be like, I have these intentions for my health and then I'll check in. Am I minimizing? Am I simplifying? Am I giving my body more of what it needs? And then you can be in those weird situations like at a restaurant or with your family. And you're like, how am I making this decision? And you can check in with those three words and it will really help you stay centered without, you know, feeling excluded. Yeah. Or like you have 5,000 things to do because that's the thing. When my clients come to me, they're like, well, I'm taking these 35 supplements because I kept reading all these. (laughs) things online that told me I needed to take them. And I think I need these five tests and then I ate this way. And now I'm on this restrictive diet. And it's like, you don't have to do all of those things. Yeah. And try, like, they'll interact, ch- cancel each other out as well. Choose a few, choose one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I think one of the other things I notice a lot with, because the, uh, one of the, one of the things I notice a lot working with people is that dosage matters, consistency matters right? Because it's not that there's only one path to health. There isn't, there are many, but all of them applied inconsistently will still fail, right? So it's like, I think, especially when we're in a panic that we won't get better, we try something for a week and then something else for a week. And then because it comes from the fear of I'm not going to get better Mm -hmm. versus from, you know, like what you're saying, I'm going to choose a path that I'm going to walk it and I'm going to walk it with integrity until I reach the destination. Yeah. And I think that's a key word, integrity, having self-integrity, because so many times 
I'll hear people say, well, I, you know, I was gluten-free for a week or I cut out the sugar for a week and then I fell off the wagon and now I've just gone downhill. It's like, it's a journey for one, check in with yourself. Are you being self-integral? What did you commit to that you can be accountable for? And two, there's no falling off the wagon. You just had a bad day and tomorrow's a better day. It doesn't mean that you've failed and that your body is suddenly going to, you know, start to create more disease. It's people like to put things in that type of a box. And I don't think that's helpful. I don't think shame is helpful in any kind of healing context. No. I think it comes up a lot. Health shaming is a big deal. Yeah. Um, I, I'd actually say it's like enough that I think most people are, like, I think it's what contributes to the overwhelm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it also makes it hard to share. And then community building becomes hard because they can't tell their families they're on a new supplement or because then that person's like, well, why would you take that? You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, instead of recognizing health as a unique journey, what works for you may not work for someone else. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a huge trigger point. I mean, even me and my hubby, like I said, we're both health freaks, but even then we still like have, you know, like really sad discussions, <laughs> very geeky discussions about, you know, whether or not, you know, whether you're doing the Moringa or the Spirulina and which ones, as if there's some kind of a competition, you know, um, and there isn't, but on you, you, when you're actually there and, and you're making financial decisions as well, because supplements cost money and stuff like that, you know, it can, it's tiny things that cause the shame triggers to kind of come up yeah. and sneaking um sneaking um green foods into my my um baby smoothies <laughs> I, I my 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 baby is now almost seven I mean he's six right now but he'll be seven in a week and yeah always done that <laughs> but he's so like right now it does but he he won't eat these things separately but he comes and helps me make a smoothie and puts in the frozen rice cauliflower puts in the spinach I'm like do you know what you're eating but in a smoothie he doesn't care <laughs> smoothie soup it just so good it's so easy um yeah and popsicles as well yes 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 exactly (laughs) yeah sorry just like the mom tips it works (laughs) it does um okay so tell me a bit about your mineral course tell me what inspired you to create it tell me why my audience should join because I think they'd really benefit from it and when you're starting when you're finishing tell me what the outline is what you what's really happening there Yeah. So it's funny. I've worked with clients one-on-one for years and I don't, I don't know why. I mean, with you being more woo-woo, we'll call it that. I don't even like the term woo-woo, but you know what I mean? (laughs) You'll get it. It just came to me one day. I, I heard you were supposed to create a course and I said, okay, I guess that's what I'm doing right now. So I wanted it to be different from courses out there. You know, most courses you go through at your own pace. Most people fall just forget about it. It sits there for weeks, months, whatever. They never finish. Mine is six modules. Everything is short. Most of my clients are busy women. They're moms. They work. They don't have time to sit through 60 minute PowerPoints. I don't, I'm not going to. So all of the lessons and there's over 30 are under 10 minutes and they're audios. So that's a bonus. I, I wanted to do something like that. It comes with a hair tissue mineral analysis and a full analysis of it. One of the modules is actually on how to interpret it. And I know some people are like, why would I want to learn how to interpret my own? I'll just hire you to do it again. I want people to feel empowered around their health. You should not have to rely on someone like me forever. Sure, you might need to hire a practitioner here and there to troubleshoot things, but you should be able to take your health more into your hands. And so if you are able to, okay, I'm going to reorder a hair test in six months. I want to see my progress. I can now look back through the course and evaluate this myself and adjust things. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it's also, I call it a supported course because there's boxer support. So you can actually communicate with me. I'm not just leaving you on your own. And then I do once a month office hours on Zoom so that people can just hop on whenever and ask questions, whether it's about their test, their health, their supplements, doesn't matter. And then um, I am running a Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale, which ends right. tonight, actually, okay. <laughs> at 11.59 Pacific, my time. Um, but it includes a 45-minute one-on-one session with me. It includes a frequency scan. Um, and then it includes three additional months of office hours. Okay. And what's your price for that? $5.99. That's an incredible price. Most of things like that are were, are literally you would have to pay at least three grand for something like that normally. I so wanted, that, yeah. 
I wanted something where, okay, people have wanted to work with me one-on-one, -on -one. maybe financially they couldn't make it happen. This is an opportunity. Okay. So I'm going to get you to DM me the link for that on the Facebook <laughs> Messenger after. And then when I put it out on the Tannoy, people are going to follow that link. Sound like a plan? Okay. Because I've got 700 people and they really need what you're offering. So it's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun <laughs> um, to see how it ignites. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love, like you said, this, the, the support side, because it's completely true. Um, the programs that I run are the same. They're always hybrids because I think you need to be able to pick someone's brain um, and you will get triggered. Things will come up and you'll be like, even if you don't understand why from, from a woo woo perspective, right? The metaphysics of minerals is that they represent um, divine structure and order, right? The capacity to hold and keep the good things in our life. So when people lack them, you know, and vitamins represent self-love. So when they lack them, they can't grow or flourish. Um, so when you're, when you're saying, you know, there's actually going to be a mineral in here not included in the course, I've never heard of anybody doing that period. You're the first ever. And I haven't heard of it either. And I wanted, I wanted to be the first. <laughs> I love firsts. <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay. So when you messaged me, you said to ask about the, the driving factors behind hormonal imbalance. But when I was running through your website, um, you were talking about natural solutions for chronic health issues, headaches and migraines. And because headaches and migraines are so connected to hormones as well, I just wanted to touch on that too, because that's so common for men and women to not understand the connection. So can you enlighten us a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, this one can be complicated. It's funny because I actually had someone messaging me today talking about her hormonal migraines, trying to troubleshoot. You know, most people don't even make the connection that it's cyclical. Hormonal. Yeah, or hormonal. I'm like, look at look at when it's coming every month. Like it's around your cycle, um, whether it's ovulation or during your cycle. But there's an estrogen piece that you mentioned that's a big one for hormones. There's a histamine piece, which usually increases with estrogen, and that itself can create some of these hormones and migraines. And then we have the wonderful deficiencies again. B6 is a B1, and magnesium is a huge mineral for hormone health. Most people are deficient in this one. We need about five milligrams per pound of our body weight every day. Get it from food, but our, our soil is depleted, so most of us have to supplement with that one mineral. Um, and it, that need increases when our body is stressed out. And if we're thinking about ovulation and female hormones, you might not feel stressed, but it's a stressor on the body. So the need goes up. So hormonal headaches, migraines, there can be so many different intricacies, but those are three big ones right there. That's yeah. I, I think, like you said, it's so important what you said that most people never make the connection between it being cyclical. Um, and that there are 10 different types of magnesium. Is there a specific one that you think helps more or does it depend on the person? Again, it kind of goes back to the person, but if I'm going to make a general suggestion, glycinate and malate are probably two of my favorite forms just because they're, they're easy on the body. Um, but yeah, other forms might be dependent if someone's really constipated or <laughs> they're dealing with something over here. So those are two good general forms. That's another big thing that I, I end up talking about a lot because people don't realize just how many pounds of poop they have, how many toxins they have, especially women, because we don't like going to the bathroom when there are other people around. We have kids, we have husbands, and then we end up not going when you should be going after every meal. And the toxicity level, you know, if your body has to choose between getting rid of toxins and getting rid of hormones, and hormones have a very short shelf life, right? So can you elaborate a little bit on that? I mean, the two go together. I mean, if we think about trying to rid the body of excess estrogen, we've got to poop it out. So like you said, we're exposed to so many different toxins on a daily basis. The body is very intelligent. It's going to take the route of least resistance. So a lot of times the hormone piece is much easier to deal with than the toxicity piece. A lot of us have clogged detox pathways. We don't have the proper nutrients to help move things. Our methylation is impaired. There's so many other different pieces, gut health. I mean, if we just want to talk about constipation on its own and eliminating estrogen, so many women are constipated and don't even think of it. Like they think, oh, going three times a week, that's normal. 
I'm like, no, that is common for you. That is not normal. Like you said, it should be multiple times a day. We can't do that. We can't eliminate excess hormones and it's just going to create this vicious cycle. Tell me a little, I'm going to go on a little tangent here because I'm getting it dropped in, like downloaded. <laughs> They're telling me to ask you about Lyme disease because it's become a kind of a trend. And I think it's also hiding other aspects um, just from the way that, like from the way that, that we work as medical intuitives, um, especially, especially viruses and bacteria. Viruses are to do with worthiness, bacteria is to do with unconscious guilt patterns. Um, which then causes acidity in the body because obviously it changes your biochemistry, right? Based on your emotional patterns. Um, but there's been a, a huge outbreak or increase of people being diagnosed with Lyme disease. And I've seen you working with quite a few people on that on your Facebook group. So what insights do you have with that one? Lyme disease is tricky and I don't want to trigger anyone. <laughs> in fact, my son was diagnosed with Lyme disease and I'm treating him with homeopathics and herbs. Yeah. Um, I think there's a couple things going on. Yes, there's an influx of actual ticks and spiders and, and all of the little critters that bring us Lyme disease. Yep. I also think that our toxic burden and our bodies are less able. Our nervous systems are shot. Most of us are in fight or flight most of the time and can't attack that. And then from a more spiritual standpoint, I think there's a whole other perspective that we could go down from that. Yes. Um, if someone suspects Lyme disease, if we want to talk inadequate testing like thyroid, <laughs> testing is highly inadequate. I mean, the Western blot is kind of the standard. Doctors will only run it if you present with like a bullseye rash or say I was bit by a tick a couple days ago. Anything longer, they're really not going to test you and it may not show up. So that's when I tell people you have to go another route. Um, there are two different panels that I really like but they're expensive. And I don't always think that they're needed. I think it goes back to the person, their yeah. symptoms, what they're dealing with. And I think it's more about looking at what someone presents with rather than chasing a diagnosis. And yeah. I think, unfortunately, this is the triggering part. Many people tend to chase that diagnosis or they see, oh my gosh, Lyme disease is on the rise. And suddenly I have the symptoms of Lyme disease. Why is that? Oh, don't, please don't get me started on the, it's like, the, it is the doctor dispense thing. You are the placebo. If you feed people that they have an illness, it, they don't under, people do not understand how powerful their mind is. No. They do not have, have you read the book? Um, what's it called? Mind over medicine. Yes. <laughs> right? So when you're really going into the studies where people were given water in a drip and they lost their hair because they thought it was chemotherapy and they were throwing their guts up and the effects of the nocebo, and then they're getting bombarded in the news, right? And it's not once, like I, I remember being in shock because I don't, I don't really, I've, I've really been on a media cleanse for years without even consciously being aware of it. I just moved away from the lying. Yeah. And um, I was turned the radio on because we got that we got a new um, car two years ago. And in London, you don't need cars, right? But we moved to Norwich. We lived on a farm. My God, you need a car, right? <laughs> You're in the middle of nowhere. And we got this old car with this proper, like, how old is it? It still has a CD box and a, and a tape thing underneath it, right? It's a beautiful yellow Jeep Hilux thing, but it's it's vintage. I get inside it. I'm like, okay, there's no way. My phone's not going to connect to this. So I'm not going to be able to listen to anything sensible without killing my map. And I need to know where I'm going. Turn on the radio. I mean, within 10 minutes, I had ads for everything from every illness under the sun and then they started talking about covid and then they started talking about um the nhs crisis and then they said i was sitting there going nice deep breaths Skylar. <laughs> we're just gonna turn off the radio <laughs> release the programming but if you're listening to that even while you're asleep yeah you know that's telling your body that you're in danger all the time just from a nervous system perspective even if you don't believe in the placebo which is a scientific thing right um which it brings us to another because what i've been seeing a lot when i do body scans like tune into the body especially for long covid for me long-term viral depletions are nothing new viruses have a way of depleting the body particularly the mitochondria long term um so when I scan them, I often see that we have to supplement to support, you know, the mitochondrial communication. 
Um, but do you think that it's the same or do you think that it's also because there was genetic modifications to the actual um, virus itself? Or does it come back to the minerals from your perspective, this long term viral um, depletion? I think it's all of those things, to be honest. You know, I think it's minerals. I think it's stress levels have depleted minerals. And then we've got the nervous system clicking in. Um, I do think things have been genetically modified. Um, viruses, uh, ticks. I don't know if you've ever read any of the books around Lyme disease and how that originated, but that's kind of interesting. <laughs> I will have a look. I've, I, I, I do a lot of body scans. And I'll tell you, like, I'm just going to be completely myself. I think that's just what works best. People are going to think I'm crazy, but screw it. I was in um, a theta healing class and I was uh, working with somebody that actually had HIV. And when I did the body scan and the virus came to have like disease whispering and I was having a conversation with the virus, <laughs> it's a crazy person. And it told me that it was angry because humans were, had committed genocide on its people and I was like what do you mean because my my consciousness was like you know a virus isn't even really alive which is ridiculous they're so intelligent our body keeps them and uses them to regulate our own genetics right um and they it's, it's just per, we're performing experiments on viruses as if they don't have a consciousness so of course they're angry at humanity right um no different than than experiments being performed on humans it's it's toxic and it makes them angry um, and it is designed to make them aggressive because most of these viruses are not aggressive. They don't even attack humans before they're modified. And it takes a lot of abuse, often decades of experimentation before they're willing to go for a human host, which I was very surprised by. You know, I never thought I'd have to do forgiveness work with a virus, but there you go. <laughs> God takes you to weird places. Um, but that was my first conscious understanding that not only did it have consciousness but that we were modifying we were playing with things that we shouldn't play with and then there was a client a few years later that was in America um, that it was to do with um, mos genetically modified mosquitoes having been released and the viruses haven't been flipped around then I had the same thing in in um, Africa and that's when I thought this is this is becoming a, a global thing and that's when I started to do research because I was a bit like well if I'm being shown this and I'm really anti-fear then this is for real right um so it, it makes you look like a conspiracy theorist but we're here to be honest and help people so there you go how does that come up for you do you because for me I tend to go to like the activated charcoal the zeolite clay the, the things that the body can bind um and the communication because if the body's never worked with that chemical before or never seen it before you know it helps if it at least understands what it is or how to because sometimes it just has no idea how to use our genetic ancestral blueprint so how do you work with those sorts of things Again, it's going to depend on the person. It also depends on their symptoms and what they present with. So I love activated charcoal. I love bentonite clay. Those are great. Any of the binders, um, even some of the zeolites and fulvic and humic acids. I like those too. Um, huge fan of herbals <laughs> if they're needed. Um, and sometimes I'll go with homeopathics. It just, it really does depend. And I know I sound like a broken record, but you don't sound like a broken record. Is, is unique. And I, I want people to know that like, there's no one size fits all. There's not a protocol just for even COVID. There's different. I love you. I love you because they all look at me. I'm not kidding. Cause when I put the, I'm going to put you out as a podcast, but I'm also going to put you in my health library if that's okay. Right. And then they'll constantly have access to you. But when I say this, because they're used to be given a book with diagnosis, most of them look at me like I'm crackers. They're like, no, I just want a disease with a belief and the protocol. And they even get it from the medical medium. And I'm like, I can't do that. I want you to look at the person and see their heart and see their soul and work on their health story. And they really struggle to the extent that I literally have a list been processed right now because I've had, I've been requested for it more than 3000 times. Mm -hmm. Right. But then my fear is like you, if I give them a list, will they stop seeing the person? Right. Um, so it's an interesting question. Do you, where do you think that comes from? This need to see the diagnosis instead of the person? Do you think it's from control or from fear or just from feeling like you're going to look stupid, like you don't know what you're doing? Or do you think it's just that people are scared of staying in the unknown until they find the answers? I think it's all of what you just said, honestly. Um, I do think for some, they need the validation. And, and I understand, like sometimes I'll tell people if a diagnosis 
will give you some relief, get a diagnosis. Like by all means, go get that. But I think that people also want the easier approach. Just give me a protocol that I can follow. Just tell me what I need to do. And it's like, well, we could try something and it might not work. We're going to have to adjust that protocol. And it's all of those things that you said truly is what I think. And do you, but I loved, I loved your, um, oh, okay. So there's two things. I loved the fact that you talk about reassessing because a lot of people talk about there's one protocol and that's it. And that's what they're selling. But the idea of the health journey being like a tide, you know, at different times of life that you have to keep continuously adapting to, I think is incredibly intelligent. Um, so can you explain that why there are so many different areas of life where you might need a different health approach and how to dance with it instead of pretend like it didn't work? You just need to actually adapt. Yeah. I mean, uh, symptom change, symptoms change. That's, that's the number one thing. Okay. Um, there's life events. If something stressful or traumatic happens, that might need to change the protocol. If you get pregnant, <laughs> that might need a change to the protocol. Um, other huge life events, they don't even have to be traumatic. You get married. Um, other things happen in your life. You change careers, you move locations. There are so many different things. Your diet changes, your aging. I mean, we always have to be looking at things. And my thing goes back to not, not chasing symptoms again and not looking for, oh, what supplements do I need to be on now? If you feel great, you feel great. Yeah. But if there comes a time, I'll use a client as an example, she has anxiety. Mm -hmm. It got a little bit better when we were working together. And then all of a sudden it got a little worse. Okay. Now we need to reevaluate. What have you been consistently doing? Cause there's that consistency piece. Okay. What's changed in your life? How are you feeling? Like, what are your emotions lately? Um, how has your diet changed? What are your stress levels? And then we go from there. Oh, okay. Things got a little better. Oh, and they got a little worse again. Now we need to reevaluate. It's a constant ebb and flow. It's a constant ebb and flow. And I think we need to, like I said, we need to stop looking at it as failure and start looking at it as adaptation and just tweaking. You yeah. know, I, I also find a lot, a lot of the symptoms that they describe as perimenopause or even as um, um, loss of hair tend to be post-birth trauma mm -hmm. and not properly, you know, nurtured recovery. Um, and then it results in, you know, severe mineral depletion, which causes bad hormone imbalance. Mm -hmm. um, and then long-term women are thinking I've gone into early menopause or I've been diagnosed with infertility, but really it's a trauma to the body, right? Yeah. So um, you said you really love herbals. Tell me some of your favorite herbs that you work with, particularly for women. Um, I mean, I love adaptogenic herbs. Ashwagandha is a good one. Rhodiola, if someone really is lacking energy, um, ginseng is another good one. If I'm working with someone that has, um, let's say parasites, I really like black walnut oil. Um, gosh, there's so many. And I, I tend to go with herbal blends too. I think there's yep. a couple of different ones out there that I'll use. Gosh, I'm trying to think of other ones. I mean, I'm even taking herbs right now just for this wonderful little sinus infection that I've got. Um, and I can't even think of what's in there besides eating cloves of garlic. Um, I love just the fresh herbs too. As, as disgusting as they are, I think there's a lot of power in just eating what nature has given us. I'll, I'm addicted to juicing and my husband, I mean, we're both kind of weird in that way. I came down the stairs when my son was really um, deep in this... Um, um, croup slash flu thing and I was juicing on a regular basis but then he took garlic and ginger and um, turmeric and um, um, crushed it all together and just came to me living with a spoon and was like here eat this and I was like I think I need to like blend it in something I don't think I can eat that raw it was lemons that was it, it was lemons and I was like, uh, yeah, we might have to like add some honey or something, but he was just like eating it with a spoon. Yeah. So this morning I was eating crushed cloves of garlic. I was putting it in a little raw honey. And let me tell you, that is some potent stuff, but it gets the job done. <laughs> it's so strong though. I find like garlic, I, I really, I feel it hit like a boom yeah. with garlic. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Okay, so if the, is there you you've given us some incredible knowledge and incredible wisdom here today? Is there anything that you want, like a piece of hope that you want to leave the audience with right before we finish off? I think my biggest thing goes back to the body is intelligent. It doesn't just fail. 
it doesn't fall apart, it doesn't hate you. There's a reason why things are happening to your body. You've got to look into what that is. Find some of the missing pieces, go back to the maximize, minimize, and prioritize, and trust that your body has the capability to heal because it does. Thank you so much, Kira. It's been ridiculous amounts of fun. I'm sorry if I got a bit overexcited, but no, um, no, no. I loved it. Good. Thank you. It was so good having you. So um, ladies, if you're thinking about joining Kira's program or working with her, I wouldn't, I could not recommend jumping on faster. I've never seen somebody working the way that she's working or who's as consistent and as kind. Okay. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank See you, you so all much. you guys in the group. It's just magic.